Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wise. All right, so I just want to start this show by telling a story that has nothing to do with hockey. Great. I want you to know that last night I was walking my two canines. Mm. Uh, they had just come back from Here one uh, sec. frolicking at the park. Oh, he's got socks on, everybody. Yeah, sorry, I do have socks on, so Good. don't worry. And they're pizza Good. socks. Panago pizza socks. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I uh, was just walking down the street. My, my dog, Cedric, uh, is a little schnauzer. And, you know, any dog that you rescue is going to have a little bit of, they're going to have some weird quirks. Okay, so he's gonna have a little snarl, a little snarl, and he uh, he's a really happy dog except for when he's on leash, and somebody goes biking by or has an electric scooter, he really doesn't like that, so he will start barking at those people as though he can somehow stop them. He thinks that they're attacking him. Right. All of them are a personal affront to We're him. Tell him off. That's oh, right. yeah. Hey, oh, they're, they're all Italian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, last night. A guy was biking by, and as usual, Cedric started. He could just yeah. see his his little whiskers, like you know, move yeah. to the side. I'm like, oh, here we go. And then he barks at the guy, and the guy goes, "Fuck off!" What? Just keeps trying. <laughs> Again, he just barked at him. The guy's like, "Fuck off!" In front of a school. It was hey, great. So, uh, <laughs> good old Cabbage Town. The show is marked explicit. Yeah. And there you uh, go. That's your fault. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, we're a little bit sorry, but like it's you gotta own some responsibility for this. Yeah. Uh, so Adam told me that story already, Jesse. And I was just imagining <laughs> I was just imagining a situation where Adam would bark back at this guy and go, You fuck off and then they get into a fist fight and then when the police come, they're like, All right, all right, let's get to the bottom of this. What happened here? What what happened, sir? What started all this? Told my dog to fuck off. <laughs> No, the, the other Listen. end is no. That guy's dog just barked at me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's worse. Oh, they're both bad though. Like they're, <laughs> like, they're the not thing. acceptable reasons to start fisticuffs. Two hundred pound man on a bike, mm. dog that doesn't understand English and is thirty pounds. Are we sure Cedric can't speak English? <laughs> I'm quite sure. He grew up in Mexico, so he's still uh, you know wrapping he his head around Spanish. these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he was. C- Cedric is not thirty pounds. He's he's not even. Yeah, he might he's be. He's a very tiny, be, <laughs> tiny dog. Tiny little schnauzer dog, but yeah. Anyway, no. So, so, so I told your dog to have. Hope. <laughs> I was trying to figure that's out whether so I should nice. be mad about that. Like, should I have told him to fuck off? No, or? that's immediately no. ridiculous. Oh, okay. I yeah, immediately yeah. went to laughing. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was like, wow, that was aggressive. I was. I even tried to talk myself into thinking I would be mad if someone did it to Iggy. I laughed so hard. <laughs> Um, now to the hockey part. Can I just say? Mm. Can I just say that we are yes. ruining, wasting this amazing start that the Toronto Maple Leafs have had? No, what? we are Ru- wasting. Adam, it. as long as we're talking about ruining and wasting, let's talk about how Garrett Sparks is not getting enough starts. <laughs> what idiot would call for him to get more starts? What idiot thinks they know better than Mike Babcock? First of all, <laughs> answer that one. You can't. What idiot? Would call Trevor Moore up just to not play him. Someone who's stupid. That's who. Are you upset? No, no. Jesse, Justin I'm Hall not. exists, by the way. Oh, does he? Yeah. You never know. Actually, I legit forgot. Yeah. <laughs> That's then. a guy. He's on the team. By the way, no, yes, we are absolutely ruining the team. And uh, do I... Should, should I take some responsibility for that? I think we all should. I think yeah. we all have to own this. All of us? Yep. Because Jesse posted a video with a very inflammatory title. <laughs> See, you said that. Nah. And my only thing about it is I just took literally the second thing you say in the video and I wrote that as the title. And and smartly, it was the most inflammatory thing he but said. But you yeah. said it out of your mouth. No. You said Mike Babcock is ruining this team. I chance, don't chance think you literally success. started the rant. I think what I said was I'm smarter than that piece of garbage. <laughs> I think that's verbatim. I could have put that as what the title. I said. You journalists. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. I always love when people when, when people will comment that. They're like, oh, you journalists, you're so smug. I'm only a journalist like, when I'm dumb. No one's ever just like... No one ever watches me wear a shark onesie and goes, ah, Steve, my favorite journalist. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm only a journalist when I have a hot take, apparently. 
Um, but yes, no, we are taking and turns it, ru- ruining a thirteen and six start, <laughs> six and three without Austin Matthews. And in in all honesty, I mean, in my memory, I can't remember the Leafs. If the Leafs win tonight, they will be in first place. Which I wish people wouldn't have tweeted that. Like, come on, I'm nervous enough as it is. Game twenty, first place. I'm gonna uh, say it again: first place, first place, first uh, place. Uh, and Vasilevsky uh, broke his foot, so uh, oh, yeah, he's oh, out. For I knew like, he was out for a few weeks. Ooh, apparently he broke his foot or something. That's a rough one. He might not have. That's a, well. Is it is it really first place if they played more games than everybody? Yes, else? yes. <laughs> it's first place. It's also winning percentage. Yeah. Should be winning percentage. But, yeah, yeah, fully. but, hey, but the, the point here I'm trying to make is that, like, all of us, all of us, the, the media, the fans, and anybody that just says it's the media, fuck off. You know it's not. Um, Listen, this I'm, is, I'm not a dog, Adam. You can't just tell me that. <laughs> fuck off. No. <laughs> Show title. All right, let's go. go. No, but if you can't. Let's okay. go. Let's smarten up. Everybody is complicit. <laughs> Should have told your dog to smarten up. <laughs> smarten up. By the way, I, I want to thank all the people that tweeted us. We're like, actually, I use Smarten Up all the time I with my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no. I, I think we're ruining it because the Nylander thing has been hanging over our heads. And we're all a little disappointed because everybody wants to see the super team finally take the ice. Hasn't happened yet. And now, Kasperi Kapitan is on a 35-goal pace. And everybody's like, oh, crap. They're going to have to pay him $78 million this summer. Yeah. Well, and I saw no. another one <laughs> from Scott Wheeler. It's like Mitch Marner uh, and his 108-point pace oh. is a problem for other teams and also the Leafs. <laughs> and you know what? I, when, when I watch him, I'm just like, no, I never feel like it's a problem. No, 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 no. If, but I get where Scott's coming from. But I mean, Scott Scott has a point. But I do want to. I would like to enjoy this season without talking about the contracts all the time. Like yeah. it, it would be nice. We we're guilty of it. We have to talk about it. But it is. It will be. It will be nice once this Nylander situation is resolved. And by the way, there's more information on that. So have fun. Get ready. Oh, we're going to get into Good. it. I haven't even heard any. How many days? Fourteen days. Fourteen days. But maybe not. Uh, okay, oh. let's get into it right now. Pierre LeBrun. I don't know if you saw this yesterday. Tweeted that and and did an article for the Athletic that said actually he can be dealt to any non-playoff team uh, by the trade deadline. He just can't play. So if you're a non-playoff team, you can you can acquire William Nylander. I want to throw something <laughs> on February 25th. I think is the date. Throw a good offer on Kyle Dubas's desk is what you want to do. It was, there, yeah, Jesse. it was non-playoff. Yeah. Anyway, so so yeah. <laughs> so you can trade him after December 1st. I just want to watch him play hockey, guys. Well, that's oh, the thing. Goodness. Watching them play hockey is a joy. Last night in San Jose, you have so an, good. an incredible, incredible game, and it starts off so well because. Despite what the traditional mantra is, which is somehow that the guy on the Sharks and I forget his name right now, was, Barclay Goodrow. Yeah, that 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 somehow was a good idea to go off a go after Kadri and get a penalty in the first ten seconds. I, I didn't get that. Uh, well, and also if it was people kept going, oh yeah, this goes back to last year when he grabbed a chunk out of Thornton's beard. That was literally off the opening faceoff. If you wanted to do something about it, you could have done it back then. Well, and Mike Babcock said after the game, and I thought this was perfect, he's like, well, Joe's a, Joe's a big boy. If he uh, felt slighted by it, he could take care of it himself. When the first fight happened, I was like, Nas should not be doing that. Yeah. That, Nas repeatedly bites off more than he can chew. He's fought David Backus twice. He shouldn't have fought him once. That guy's way bigger. Yeah, and mean. 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 Yeah, I, yeah well, but... Key factor: Nas is crazy. <laughs> That's he's out of his mind and, and so and a crazy person. It was put forth by the Sportsnet panel that that um, that uh, attack. I get. I wouldn't say it. I call it an attack, but you know, trying to intimidate yeah. Kadri set the tone for the game. That was, that was Kipper. Now was, what I, and I was just like Nick. Now they scored on the pow- the Leafs scored on the power play. Yeah, no, and what was great is people going. Well, actually, it wasn't on the power play. I'm okay. It was a second after. The person who got out of the box wasn't part of the play. It's a power play goal, basically. You know, it won't go on the record as a power play goal, but it's a power play goal. But it's goal, not fellas. then, Steve. No, yeah, but it's not. It? Is it a power Either play it goal? is or isn't, shithead. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> Maybe. What what if, down, dog. What if we did an episode where we only talked about positive comments? No. <laughs> no? We'd least listen are, I'm to sorry, show. Are there any? <laughs> Least listen to podcast ever. <laughs> Just every good thing that everybody has to say, that's what we bring up. 
I mean, it's a good idea in theory. Yeah. I just. Uh, well, okay. I'll tell you what Barclay Goodrow tried to do off the opening faceoff, and Nas played it perfectly. He was trying to get the coincidental minor. Right. Or, at very which, least, or a fight. Which, which I is believe the same thing, so. Carlson got later, right, with mm-hmm. Kadri. Yeah, and Timo Meyer. Uh, Timo, Timo Meyer. Um, but it was a little too obvious what Goudreau was doing. He was getting in Kadri's face. He's like standing on his side of the face off dot. Like, dude, you can't do it. You don't do it in front of the teacher. No. You don't act up in front of the teacher. The ref is right there. What are, what are you doing? And then he got called. Weird that. Weird. And it worked in the least favor, and they got the goal out of it. It happened two other times in the game. Timo Meyer did it, and I didn't mind that. That's, you know, just hard battling, whatever. But then later in the game, it was Melker Carlson giving Kadri four or five rabbit punches. Kadri finally responds, and then it's coincidental. I think that's what Gaudreau thought was going to happen off the top. And I sort of looked at it after the game. I didn't I didn't realize how bad of a season these guys were having. Timo Meyer has 12 goals. He's uh, So he leads the Sharks in that department, and he's second in team scoring. That's pretty good. Yeah, so him that's for Kadri, good. like that's, uh, that's relatively even, right? Uh, Barclay Goodrow has three points. Melker Carlson has one. So like, wow. yeah, they're just sending the scraps of the lineup. No offense, to take off the Leafs' second line center. Like, I don't think it was necessarily about vengeance or anything. They were just trying to get Kadri to do something stupid. Yeah, exactly. And and you take Kadri off the ice if you're a no point guy. He's not a no point guy. He's a big point guy. So yes. you need that's a that's not a trade you want to make. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't good. But the Sharks who played a great game, I thought, and are such a fast-skilled team. I thought they let it distract them too much, and had they not uh, really played into it, they might have run away with the game. They might have killed the Leafs. 3-2. How often has Freddie Anderson allowed three goals in a period? Not many it's times. Not, unless it was against Boston last year in the, in unless the playoffs. Unless it was against Boston in the playoffs. <laughs> but uh, this regular season, I don't know if it's happened once. I don't think so. No one's I can think and, of. And that's the thing, though, as after, it, it's funny with, with him, um, because there, you know that with certain goalies, I feel like Tuka Rask might be one of these guys. If it's a three-goal start to a game, Tuka's having a bad game. Mm. If, for, for, for some reason with Freddie, it's like, oh, he had a bad period, but he'll probably be fine. I think Freddie has settled into his role of, oh, I'm Grant Fuhr. Or like, oh, I'm yeah. Marc-Andre Fleury. Like, I... I don't necessarily need to be the best goalie in the league. I just need to be better than that guy. Yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the other end of the ice. And it doesn't look good statistically, although Freddie does. Um, but you just got to win the game. And, you know, he just he settled in and he, you know, dug in there and he didn't allow a goal for the rest of the game and they won the game. I think that's the name of the game is to win the game and they won the game. <laughs> that sounds exactly like what, what he would that? say. So, I guess the, the, the first kind of thing that I wanted to, to mention um, – is that was it not the California road trip that cost Randy Carlisle his job a few years ago? Ooh, I don't remember. Wasn't that their first win in San Jose since Carlisle was the coach? It was yes, no. Ron uh, it was Ron Wilson. Ron Wilson, and I only bad. know that because of my LFR from today. Yeah, that was um, Wilson's six hundredth win mm. in the NHL, and I wouldn't have known this when I shot that video, but as I was editing it. I think that was the money on the board game. Remember when uh, Wilson got fined? Because they, they, they accidentally caught on camera. Um, they wrote something on, on the whiteboard about, like, I'll give 500 bucks or whatever it is or 1000 bucks to whoever scores the game winner oh. here in San Jose where I was fired from, right? Right. For my 600th win. I, I seem to remember a shot of Francois Beauchemin in there. But, yeah, it's been time. It was a six hundred dollar cash incentive. Come on! (laughs) And what was the fine about it? Uh, The fine was ten G's. Oh, an undisclosed amount. Come on! The National Hockey League has fined the Toronto Maple Leafs an undisclosed amount for violating Article Twenty Six of the current collective bargaining agreement by offering a cash prize to players. I get it. I get it, but knock it off. And I love that it's undisclosed too. Like that was before Twitter when you could do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they probably were like, "Hey guys, can you just not?" And we'll just can say, you just, "Can yeah. you just not?" What day was this? Uh, well, the game was January eleventh, twenty eleven. So the fine would have been, uh, let's see, January fifteenth. Thirteenth. Ah, wow! wow. Didn't waste That's time. amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. So uh, you know, I was thinking about it. Who would have thought a guy? Who spent the first two and a half weeks, three weeks on the uh, 
on the on the fourth line, who's now moved up to the first line, who people said wouldn't be very good without Austin Matthews. Oh, is this, who's this? Kisperi. Oh, okay. Who would have thought no. that that guy would be scoring at a 35-goal pace? After going on like a seven-game goal drought, which is weird. It's weird that that felt long because <laughs> my expectations for Kapanen went from very low to very high very quickly. Right, yeah, yeah. Because I've I've always loved him. Always loved him in the NHL. I remember, remember they called up four guys. Um, it was four guys' first game all at once. It was Nylander, Kapanen, Hyman, and Soshnikov. All played their uh, first game in the NHL in the same game. And Kapanen looked the best out of all of them. And he, he took the longest to make the NHL as a regular out of all of them. But even when he was never scoring points, I loved him. Loved this player. And the fact that he's now bagging him is wicked. I, I think it's funny, too, that... He expects to score, too. Yeah. He's been that. freaking out over the past two weeks. Every, every time he doesn't score. There was one where the Leafs were up 3 or 4 to 1. And he missed a scoring chance. And he's like, fuck! <laughs> like, <laughs> well, ripping out his hair. And I hate to say it, but I mean, he is on a, he is in a contract year. And anyway, so he's probably looking at like, I could make some real money here. This well, is great. He's already made a bunch of money. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is how much. And, and we don't need to get into that right now because who the hell knows. But, I wonder if the Leafs are like, ah, nuts. <laughs> no, I don't think they're so. They're definitely not. I think, uh, I think if you're the Leafs, Value. you kind of look at it like, well, we got a guy for Phil Kessel. And and that was the thing. Yeah. When they when they made the Phil Kessel trade, the story was not about the the return. Because if you just were to look at the return, it's about a new era. It was about the new era, and it was about the six point eight million dollars that they got off the cap, mm -hmm. which they thought they were they were stuck to for some reason. I don't I don't know why people thought that you couldn't move Phil Kessel. Because uh, looking back, like eight million is a lot. It is eight million is a lot for the but, player he was. With the Leafs, which we know was still pretty good, but the he wasn't the ninety-two point Phil Castle we're seeing in we're seeing in Pittsburgh. Uh, well, it w certainly wasn't that, but it's also like anyone who was on the Leafs like had their reputation sort of tarnished by virtue of being one of the Leafs. And if you were a key part of that team, yeah, no one really wanted you as a key part of theirs. Now Kessel was brought into Pittsburgh not really to be that. And when he won the first Stanley Cup, he was on the third line. But no, uh, he was great for them, good for them. But now the Leafs are seeing wicked return. Well, that first round pick was used for Freddie. Yeah, and yeah, I know mm -hmm. the Ducks used it to draft a pretty good player. And but uh, we needed Freddie. It, but we yeah, more than we needed, needed Sam Freddy. Steele. And it was Sam Steele. You're right. And um, captain has been getting better and better and better. And and it's not it's not that I would I would never say oh the Leafs won that trade or whatever. The Leafs it served no. a purpose for the Leafs, it served a purpose for the Penguins, it made sense for yeah. both sides, but you, you know at the time cups you win. <laughs> but people almost wrote off Kasperi Kapanen in that trade and I thought that was funny cuz he was I think a 24th overall pick and they were like, "Well, he's yeah. a guy, his dad was in the NHL, he's fast, but like we're not really sure." And it was He it, got he got buried. He did. He was on that Marley's team that was so good in 2016. And he was a healthy scratch for game one of the playoffs. That's crazy to think. Yeah, well, I, but then Sheldon Keefe puts him back in the lineup, and I would argue he was the Marlies' best forward for the rest of those playoffs. And isn't it funny, though, is, is, as soon as he got here, he was outsha outshone by Nylander. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because Nylander was so good that year, that 2016. And then the next year, it's Marner, and Marner's yep. ripping it up, but they didn't really talk too much about Marner for that year. And the conversation was always, are the Leafs going to get that first overall pick? Is it going to be Matthews? Is it going to be... Line A didn't come in really till the end. Um, when there well, was... It was like a Line A pull your ERV and then Line A sort of pulled ahead. Yeah. And it's funny that like Kasperi Kapanen has never been the story. Nope. He's been a part of some pretty major things here, and yet he's never been the story. Like two years ago in the playoffs, he scored that huge overtime winning goal with Brian, Brian Boyle setting him up. Yep. Uh, he last year was really good again and in the playoffs. And then he didn't make the team out of camp. Exactly. But like it's just they could send him down, though, that's why. Yeah. That was the only reason, so he had a little bit of bad luck. And I think it's it's just very, it's been very interesting to watch this guy who, um, if anybody, if you've been paying any attention to the AHL, you know how good he is. And you know what he can be. And you knew he was going to. Uh, but at the, it's almost like at the NHL level, he's even more effective. And I don't know how to describe that. When I saw him play in the AHL, he was great. But it's he's, like in the NHL, he's there's just a... Uh, he's I, got buy speed. Yeah. He's got buy speed. There was... Uh, there was... It was Kapanen's second goal of the game. It was uh, the shorthanded one. Marner strips the puck at the blue line. And 
before the play is even made, Kapanen reads it and Carlson reads it at the same time. Eric Carlson. And Carlson just sort of puts his head down. He knows. He knows. He read the scouting report. I'm not catching him. And he was right. And that's Eric Carlson, man. Kapanen's got that buy speed. I'd love to know, not necessarily the uh, going around the rink one. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he would fare in that one, but the just straight away red line to red line, uh, Kapanen's got to be one of the fastest in the league. Maybe no Alex Formanton, but at least Connor McDavid. <laughs> he's got to be pretty good. You know, we talk all he's this crap, but like, I hope he like he's probably gonna be on Team Canada for the World Juniors, right? Who Alex Formanton? Formanton? Yeah, if, yeah. If he's Canadian, no, I, I think they unfortunately Ottawa just associated his name with Connor McDavid, and you shouldn't do that. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. Um, it's not, not a good look. Very quietly, John Tavares is on pace for 50 goals this year. Something yeah, but, he has never done. His career yeah. high is 38. He had 37 last year. He's not as pretty as other players. Well, and I okay, so I was, have some pretty players. There have been some real hot takes about him, and if you're if you're outside of the Toronto market, you've probably missed all these. But um, <laughs> and they vary from shouldn't have signed him to we can now afford to trade Austin Matthews because of him. That was a real thing. <laughs> Somebody said that this. Yeah. Who was that again? That was Damian Cox. Yeah, yeah I forgot that. to say in the LFR today. Like to Tavares's credit, um, him and Matthews were able to kind of platoon, but with Matthews out, Tavares is the team's number one center. Yeah, and he's playing like it, and he's getting the ice time, and he's getting the production. He's been great. I find it interesting, though. There was, I think it was Jeff O'Neill that mentioned that. Uh, Gauthier has no points. No, he, he didn't say that. He does now, Jeff? <laughs> uh, he also uh, no. He was saying that they didn't get John Tavares to be the 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 tip and bang and you know bang and crash guy. I'm like, well, who gives a shit? He's doing that though, and it's working. Yeah. So who cares? I don't understand. Yeah, so I just it's again. This goes back into the theme of we're ruining our own good time. Yeah, we're ruining our own party. We're walking through our own party right now. He's not scoring like, goals good enough. Yeah, in the exact way that you want it at all times. I like I. They're scoring goals. Yeah, they're winning games. What What else do you need? They're goalie. Oh, they're, they're you know what? Their goals against average. Is, yeah, their goals against average is a little high though. They're thirteen and six. It's not a thing. <laughs> no, yeah, they're winning games. That's what I didn't under I, I don't understand. Anyway, John Tavares, I mean, I, from what I understand, can be streaky, but I also think that it probably played into the fact that he was not surrounded by a ton of talent on the island. He's not. You, he, I mean, ah. to say, listen, to say that John Tavares has ever played for a better team other than Team Canada than the team he's on right now would be just an outright lie, and nobody can debate me on that. Well, healthy. There's, healthy. What the, Islanders the team? The what least. Islanders team? Has been better than this current Leafs team, even with Austin Matthews Man, out. Yeah, but you got to remember, put put Tavares on that Islanders team. I don't, I don't. I'm not saying they're better than the Leafs, but I am. At the time, with I was like, dude, if he stays there, their offense is still ridiculous. I mean, last year might have been the closest because their offense was great. It was so good. Like they Bar had like a, I want to say a top five offense. Yeah, they did. Could not stop Buck. To my bottom five defense. That was the problem. Well, and the, and so my, but then he comes to the Leafs. My point is the reason the reason he might have been streaky is that he might you know he was carrying a ton of the load of those Islanders he was teams. Carrying a lot. And and sorry to finish my thought there, so you don't misconstrue it. Uh, Leafs defense overrated. I said there. It's it's an overrated storyline. How bad it is. I think. Really. They're adequate. They're. I mean, look look around the league. Uh, they're. Not hurting much more than a lot of other teams. Hainsey is so rough. He is rough for sure. That left side's nice. That left side's nice, man. Uh, uh, Riley, Riley Gardner Dermott? Yeah, yeah it's not that's bad. okay. The right side's a, a little rough. Ojiganov's an improvement on uh, Polak. Polak. I haven't noticed Zaitsev have nearly as much this year, which is a great sign. It's I nice. don't. I don't want to see. I don't want to notice you. Yeah, boys. Uh, Justin Bourne said last night, like Hainsey's washed. He's got nothing, man. Well, so how long? He's got no speed. How long before the Matt Martin type? And I, I hate to keep using Matt Martin as this situation, but we said Matt, Matt Martin, Martin didn't fit this team, didn't fit this team, didn't fit this team, and then all of a sudden one day, coaching staff were like, "Yeah, you know what? He doesn't fit the team, and he never but played." You need somebody to pick up Painsy's minutes. Well, and that that might be it, right? They don't have they don't yeah. trust anyone else. Yeah. So this is the thing, Jesse. Can you pull up the, the box the like the box score from the last couple games? Okay. Because. I think that's slowly starting to happen, um, and we need to look a little harder at the ice time rather than who players are playing with. Um, 
you know, it's a little bit against the grain of what Ian Tullock said, or Tulock said uh, last time he was on the show. Oh. Do we have breaking news We there? have a trade. We have a trade. The New York Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers have completed a trade. Uh, Ryan Strom to New York for Ryan Spooner. Oh, okay. Which means Peter Shirelli has turned Jordan Eberle into Ryan Spooner. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to That's Cappy for pointing that out. You know uh, what? Oh, is Spooner a center or I, a winger? I don't know. Can we look that up? <laughs> yeah, let's look that up. Yeah, sorry. Our thought, I don't even remember what we were just talking about. I was, I was looking up uh, Hainsey's minutes. Yeah, Hainsey's yeah, minutes. It, but does, we'll it get, doesn't we'll, matter as much. Yada, yada, yada. Dermot's uh, been playing a lot more. Yeah. And recently. you know what? I think a lot of that had to do, too, with... Um, uh, when the Leafs, what was it the other last week? The Leafs were in a dominant position, and Dermott's minutes spiked because Babs gave him a lot more time. And I wonder if yeah. that game was one of those center. Where, center. He's a center. So they kind of. I think that Edmonton's probably thinking he's a center. Two points in eighteen games. I think. Uh, Is he I expiring think, deal though? Uh, I don't think so. I, I want to say he just resigned. Well, he was an RFA. Uh, this is uh, the second trade in. What second trade in two days? Mm-hmm. That's a one of, for one of uh, of a one for one and uh, selling low, selling low. Yeah, <laughs> two change of scenery guys. Moves. Yes, um, I Oof. wonder if the Oilers or sorry, yeah, if the Oilers make that move because they do want to keep Dry Settle and McDavid together. That's definitely what it seems like. Yeah, like yeah. if they need another center because they've got they'll have Nuge, but Nuge was playing some wing. I think he was playing mostly wing with uh, McDavid. They have options there. Oilers have been getting better, haven't but, they? But uh, Spooner's got this year and next year left at $4 million. Yeah, that's, be a UFA at the end of it, and he's 26 right now. Yeah, that's not great. Well, that's not uh, two points in 18 games great. That's not very good. And I know Strom is roughly same hit, probably roughly same production. Ah, interesting. I mean, that's the sort of trade I don't mind. Right away, like just you're you don't trying get to do something. Yeah. I get you're throwing you're throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Strom's a three point one this year, and next year, and then he's an RFA at the end of it. So they took on salary. Wait, no, yeah. they must. No, there, I bet awesome. there's going to be salary retention or something announced because the Oilers can't afford that. I don't think. I don't think the Oilers can afford that. They're like already, I think, less than a quarter of a million from the cap. <laughs> if I remember correct. At Charting Hockey, Sean Tierney. On the plus side, Shirelli found a way to show that Ryan Strom is better than some other NHL players. On the negative side, he's now managed to lose the Eberly trade twice. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, is Spooner not as good? Is uh, that what he's saying? That's what I'm... Oh. Yeah, that's what he's saying, Brooksy. Yeah. Oh, Oilers. That's a shame. There's No, there's got to be some sort of money. Does there? Uh, the <laughs> Rangers retain 900 k so it's just a, that's just to even it out then. So it is uh, literally there's it's still a three point one. So it's it's even that's more from John similar. Shannon. Yeah, it's so even more similar. It'll to the be Hagelin exact same, trade. right? Yeah, their, their cap yeah, hit yeah. would be the same. So it doesn't give many cap relief. So Hagel and Pearson are the same as well. That's just man. Been a while since we had a trade break on the show. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it's been a long time. I, I looked over at your phone and saw the Friedman yeah, uh, I was like, avatar. Whoa. I'm like, oh, okay, we okay, got something, and it, and it doesn't have to do with yeah. NHL player safety or something like that. Now, yeah. here's a can I just read this from Cap? Friendly? Please do. So, uh, the New York Rangers have retained 900k of Spooner's sa- Spooner's contract as per Friedge. This reduces his cap hit from four million to three point one, which is equivalent to Strom's cap hit of three point one. So you're just it effectively results in no cap change for either team. Right. Okay. Player for player, literally. Fine. Yeah. A okay. Good for you. Uh, except for apparently, Spooner's not as good as Strom. Well, yeah. Okay, we'll Sean. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see. Could be a change of scenery thing because Spooner's also. I mean, he's not that. He's not. A two According points to archaeology guy, games player. Matt Henderson. Oh, I bet he's very pro Oilers. Spooner is dead last among Ranger forwards in Corsi. With 39.3%. And what's FF percentage? Fenwick 4. Fenwick 4, 37.9%. Ew. And SF percent? That I forgot. We'll call that day. Sean Frank percentage. Sean? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 37.2%. Somebody's name I just... His PDO is 1.0. Shot 4 percentage. Shot 4 percentage. His PDO is 1. Oh, so it's like even? Yeah. Listen to us trying to figure and things out. And Strom, yeah. It's great. They both have two points this year. Yeah. Ooh. What? 
It seems Man. like they're relatively the same amount of skill. Yeah, so you're just trying. Yeah, just try shit. You're just trying. I'm playing the best. Hey, they, hey in exchange of Ryan's. Analysis. Good, good analysis. <laughs> Arthur Staple, if you really want a big picture of this, it looks like Matthew Barzell, Anthony Bavillier, and Jordan Everly to the Isles and to Edmonton, Ryan Spooner, and a 2019 third rounder. Hey, you don't know who the third is. You don't know who the third is. Don't That's be right. so quick to judge. Could be Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> oh, my God. You never know. Wow. We're finding out in real time how bad this deal is. Wow. Super de duper. That is very interesting. Um, Ryan, uh, Ryan Spooner. I always go back to the first first and only, actually, time I met him. He was at the draft combine, mm-hmm. and he had uh, just gotten out of his interview with the Islanders and was really pissed off because they're, they did one of those interviews where they intentionally tried to antagonize him. And then they drafted him. No, they didn't. Oh. Uh, who drafted him? The Bruins. Oh, of course they didn't draft him. The Bruins, and then he was traded to the Rangers, and I was right. like, ha, now he can get his revenge on the Islanders. And then he did not. In fact, the last game he ever played... As a Ranger, was against the Islanders, and they lost. Wow. All right. There you go. All right. Uh, now, so just quickly back to Hainsey. So you were saying that, that, that his minutes are down? Uh, I think so, at least oh, for, the for the last couple well, of Sorry. For the last couple of games. Well, and I just wonder, what's the breaking point? Like, we can all see it. Mike Babcock's not stupid. He can slowly get He can see it, too. Yeah, that's... I always... Yeah, I'll give Babcock the credit of... He he does, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's not a moron. He's won before. He used to coach the Red Wings. He knows what skill looks like. So uh, he must see this, and I, and yet the, the I know dude can't keep up. He's just overly loyal up. to veterans. Is that what it is? Um, like what? what listen, I think Ron Hainsey in someone else's body would be one of the better defenders on the team. You know what I mean? Like, you think he's just? I think he's smart, and he's just he's old. so often caught flat-footed. So often. Do would you like his last five games? Yes. Of time on ice. Yes, please. It's twenty minutes, seventeen. So twenty minutes last night? Yes. Twenty, seventeen, nineteen, seventeen, twenty one, twenty two. That's more than five. Uh, okay. Well, uh, the anything over twenty is far too much, even mm. though he's playing on the top pair. Played the, twenty last night. The seventeens. Those are encouraging. He shouldn't have played bloody 20 minutes in the first half of a back-to-back for crying out loud. So I would hope Dermott gets a ton of minutes against the Ducks. I find I it, uh, I also think, I think Garrett Sparks playing tonight, right? He mm-hmm. ought to. Yeah, it's his so, job. So, it's his bloody job. It's, no, this is a great bounce back thing for him because, A, the Ducks are decimated, and, and B, yeah. they don't generate shots even when they are healthy. Second, so second this is worst great. Uh, goal scoring in the league. Behind the Kings. What was it? I think Scott Wheeler actually Ahead put up a, a graphic, and he was like, it was through two periods of play, and the Sharks, or sorry, the, the Ducks had put 10 shots on the board, and the other team had put 37. Two periods. How does this keep happening to Randy? And, and, well, and, and Scott's like, 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 this what? has to be it for him, right? And you look at that, and you're like, yeah, it does have to be, but it's I don't know that it is. I don't know that it is. I don't know that... that um, well, it, it, you know what? It reminds me a little bit of his tenure with the Leafs, because there was a while... I seem to remember where we we're like, this has to be it, right? It's it's coming up. This has to be it. But they kept getting hurt. And it's like, but wait till he has a healthy team. Right. You can't probably... Wait till Sean have... Michael Lyles is healthy and oh back in the lineup. Oh, my God. Wait, like, with the Ducks, you're going to be waiting the whole season. They're busted. Yeah. Has Corey Perry played? I don't think so. I haven't heard his name is, once. Is Kessler playing? <laughs> he... He is. He has, has played. I don't know if he still is. I mean, Fridge was saying he might retire. Like he's like that's how hurt he was. Wow. I I'm trying to think of like Ducks players' names I've heard recently. Cam Fowler, <laughs> once because he scored a hat trick. The next because he got hurt after. Yeah. And uh, then John heard, Gibson. Now I've heard is Brandon Montour because of the Nylander trade rumors. Oh yeah, that was terrible. And Manson, Josh Manson. No. Um, the other thing, uh, Eric Carlson. I know Andrew Berkshire put together an article for Sportsnet.ca about Eric Carlson. I think it was last week, and he said, you know, his underlying numbers are good. That was the uh, Steve Dangle question, was it not? That's right. That's right. Well, it was both that of you was, together, wasn't it? Was the article where Steve asks a question oh, and oh, Andrew writes. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> I asked the question. Andrew does. All of the work, <laughs> and I helped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this what, week, what is wor- the uh, what is the bit? Is it Brad Pitt? Or is oh no no no! It's um, you're thinking Matt Damon. Matt Damon and, uh, and um and yeah and uh, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, yes. Yeah. Hey, can you go ahead and put both of our names on that <laughs> that script? Thanks, Matt. 
<laughs> you got any pot? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, so I, I I gotta be King Lear in twenty minutes. Just hello, 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 got it. <laughs> <laughs> did <laughs> Did did Eric Carlson look off to you? Because a lot of people were tweeting about how he looks off. I'm like, I don't know. Well I don't know. I just I, don't know. I it might be uh something something cognitive, you know, it might be something in the brain because I, I was watching him. I just wanted to use that word. I was watching him, and I'm going... In the brain. In the brain, cognitive. I was watching him, and I'm going, okay, am I seeing that he's not as good as I remember because I'm anticipating him not being as good as I remember? Right, like the, there's that... I don't know. It's not recency bias, but there's a bias. That's There's a name for that. That it's like you've been told something, so then you see it all of a sudden, right? It's like when you buy a car, and then all of a sudden, all you see is your car on the road. I don't know. There's like studies on that. Yeah, yeah. Right? You buy a black car and you're like, whoa, I've got it. I've got the only black car in this kind. I've never seen another one. And then all of a sudden, everybody in your street is the same black car, same model, same I year. I feel so stupid. Over the last 24 hours, I went to the publisher <laughs> yesterday and she was using all kinds of big book words that I didn't understand. Was cognitive one of them? No. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I don't even remember the word. It was like, it wasn't didactic, but it sounded like it. And I, I also don't know what didactic means. Your picture, by the way, at the publisher yesterday was quite adorable. It was, wasn't it? it? Was that real? It's a uh, frequency no. illusion. Frequency illusion. That's, frequency the, that's the term illusion. about the car thing. Yeah, so or I wonder, I wonder the if that's... the science definition. Oh. Badir menhorf phenomenon. Wait, wait. Your Latin me... is so sharp. <laughs> Bader Menorf Phenomenon. Bader Meinhof? Nope, I said it Bader correctly. Meinhof? <laughs> is it German? It might be. Uh, is a das car. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a word. Frequency illusion. Definitely. That that uh, that word was also a player on the Austrian Olympic hockey team, strangely ah, enough. Um, scored no goals. <laughs> scored no goals. Just no. like the rest of the team. That's right. Now, I, I just, I wonder with... Um, uh, what were we talking about? It was I'm losing my mind here because we went out drinking last night and I'm not I'm not with it today. Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson with Eric Carlson. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if it's a lot of one person said it, so everybody's saying it. Like when when um, uh, when Pierre Gauthier was Pierre Gauthier. Oh my God, who is the Senators' coach? Guy Boucher. Guy Boucher. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap! Close. I'm losing. You my just mind. picked French names out of a hat. <laughs> You know, came French up with guy, visor, ones. coach, yeah. when, uh, Jacques, what's his yeah. name? Hey, Jacques, French guy. Um, yeah, no, he when 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 he was coaching the Lightning, and he said, "Yeah, we got James Reimer's number." Yeah. Oh, we know, we know the book. On we know the book on James Reimer, and then and then all of a sudden, everyone was like, "Ah, ah, the book." Let me do back the upside, can't control rebounds. You name yeah. it, they said it. And none of it was necessarily true, uh, but it was just one person said it, so everybody's like, "Ah." That too. I want to say it's a Travis Yost bit where whenever they're like, ah, have people figured out X goalie? And he goes, let me guess, high glove. <laughs> let me guess. Because that's where, that's where people shoot. Yeah. That's where a lot of goals are scored. <laughs> On everyone. Everyone. It's almost everyone. like bar down would be a thing. You would think. No. Mm-hmm. No. No. For yeah, sure. a lot of people talk about like their, oh, yeah, I just beat them like slightly off the ice five hole. <laughs> Yeah, no one talks about It's a about weak those. spot. Yeah, you know? Bardownski. It is, it, <laughs> is for, it. it is for Mike Smith. Um, we'll get to that later. But yeah, no, I just wondered if Eric Carlson, um, if he looked off or if it's just frequency illusion. Um, I think he's not going to, he's not really in the running for the Norris, but you kind of expect him to be because everybody yeah. made it. It was three months of nonstop Eric Carlson talk this yeah, summer. And but, then all of a sudden we're just supposed to pretend that it wasn't a big deal. If last year's. Uh, heart race was any indicator. Carlson may never win a Norris again, and it's going to be hard for him to ever be nominated for one, even no matter how good he plays, because he's got Brent Burns there. Well, I was wondering and about pe- that. Some a uh, couple people said the same about like Tavares. If you look at how he's playing, he's actually in like heart conversation territory. He's not going to get it. No, no, because he's on a good team. Well, I I, I wonder too, um, because of that. Eric Carlson just may not look as good. And I guess that goes to your point. Like, he looked so good on the Senators because he was so much better than the Senators. Yeah. Well, and he did so many things for them because they needed him to. Mm-hmm. Where, like, I never really doesn't knew need him. all that. Like, can you look up his stats? Like, maybe I'm wrong, but I never knew him as, like, a big goal scorer. And everyone's making a big deal out of the fact he has no goals. No, he wasn't like, he always, he, like, a 52 assist guy? He, yeah, he moves the shit out of that puck. 
He moves the puck. Uh, His goal totals, uh, going back to 2013-14, it's 20, 21, 16, 17, 9, Zero. Buddy, ignore me. That's a lot of goals. A lot of goals. Twenty That's goals. A lot of goals. He's a Connor Brown. Last type year goal was score. only nine, though. <laughs> Last year was only nine. Last year was only nine. Yeah. Um, there was a really good stat on Sportsnet I saw yesterday where Brent Burns' first, I want to say, twenty games last year was five assists, no goals, and then the rest of the way he scored twelve goals and had like fifty points or something like that. So, I mean, it could be something like that for him. The Sharks overall, though. Like I came out of that game going, that, yeah, they were a good team. That well, they are a good lose. team. Like it, that's gonna happen. Losses happen, even losses to good teams. happen. I thought I I just thought they got unnecessarily distracted by Nas. Yeah, it did. Kind I of didn't understand. Like in the first period, I was like, "There's no way the Leafs are coming away with the win in this." Now we did have another trade yesterday. Yes, we did. Or not? Not yesterday. Was it Monday? I think it was the day before. Yeah. So Jim Rutherford signs his extension, and he's like, "And by the way." Mm-hmm. Carl Hagelin, see you later. Yep. And he gets Tanner Pearson back. Now, what's interesting about this, Carl Hagelin works for the Kings because it seems as though, and I was mentioning this a couple episodes ago, the Kings haven't done anything since the new management took over. They literally have not done a thing except for sign Ilya Kovalchuk. Well, and now it seems like, oh, we're going to actually do something. So you bring in a guy. You, you they trade, bring in speed. They bring in speed. And Carl Hagelin's deal is also up at the end of the year. So they look at that and they go, well, yes. we get that gives us a little more flexibility, which is good. Yeah, that's why that deal is good. So you're you're shedding money. It's probably good from a financial standpoint uh, because you're shedding Tanner Pearson's contract, which I guess you don't love. But it's just funny that the team who last – I think it was just last episode we were criticizing for being too old – traded a 26-year-old for a 30-year-old, you know? Um, but they clearly got him to get faster, maybe see if he can fix things. They're probably going to discover you need a little bit more than that. And then uh, at the deadline, someone should definitely take a flyer on Carl Hagelin. And then you get a nice future. Easy. Easy. There it is. Now, there are a list of teams I've compiled for today's episode that I think at the 20-game mark, which is about where we're at, um, I think they're ready to do something crazy. This, buddy, the dam's breaking. This is where I think... There's already a couple holes. And and we've already had a couple coach firings, or we've had a, a big coach firing. Um, yep. And I think I think there are a couple teams. Well, and and the first team on my list, interesting that they made a trade today, the Edmonton Oilers. Interesting. Now I think uh, now according to Elliot Friedman uh, in Thirty One Thoughts, he said that uh, teams are already quietly inquiring about whether Joe Quinville would coach this season. Oh yeah, they want him now. And if the Edmonton Oilers are not willing to take whatever he was making in Chicago, which was I think six million, and going, we'll pay you more. Yeah, we'll just we'll match what, it and then some. What do you need? Uh, I, I I would think they're nuts. They need to get. That's a guy they need. There's a guy they need. The Edmonton Oilers don't have any room under the cap right now. They have nothing. So that's the one thing that you can say. We have a rich owner. We have a city that supports us. We have no money problems. Let's go get the best coach available. You're gonna have to sweeten that pot a little bit. And the Oilers should do it. But uh, I, I was. I heard recently it's not the most beloved destination, which I know is a thing that's often said about Edmonton, but it was one of those from the horse's mouth sort of things. Oh, for him? Uh, no, just for, uh, oh yeah, for the person I'm referring to, yes. Well. Um, yeah, Quinn, I mean, but the the other thing is who wouldn't want to coach McDavid? Well, that's that's my thought. If you think you're a smart coach, which I'm sure Joel Quinville does, if you think you're one of the best coaches out there, the money's right, and you get to coach McDavid. Man, buy a parka. Yeah, like <laughs> is it that cool it in your big ass mansion? Yeah, I, housing I prices are very reasonable in Edmonton. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. A million dollar house in Edmonton is a big ass house. Plug in your car and get to work. <laughs> that's a that's a plug can't in your miss car and get to work. You're right. You're absolutely right, and I think or or get a heated garage for your car. Yeah, um, man. There's a lot of people from all parts of the world who are like, "Plug in your car." What are you talking about? Oh, does everyone drive electric out there? Yes, that's what I mean. I know. That's what I mean. It's a, it's called a block heater. Look it up. Yeah. Um, but the I think that the Oilers are ready to do something crazy. I think the the fact that they just traded for Ryan Spooner is interesting. And for what it's worth, uh, you were just reading a bunch of people saying that the Oilers lost that trade. I just got a text from someone who said that they won. Oh. So someone that I trust. Not Did they say random. why? Uh, no, we're doing a show. I didn't. Uh, get oh, okay. Into depth. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> are you uh, Are you happy with the time that Todd McClellan has been given? It's yes. Yeah. Uh, it's he's had some yeah. time now. Listen, I think the Oilers' woes fall 
more on management for sure. But yeah, I have look, a chance to get Joel Quinville. I look like, at this. Come on. I look at this as dude, like Todd McClellan will end up in a in in like a smaller city. He'll coach again. Um, I, I don't think anybody. I think it's like the Stan Bowman situation with Joel Quinville in in Chicago. The GM goofed, goofed big on a couple big trades. I'd still say St. Louis is a decent destination for McClellan. Hundred percent. And, and I just any, see, any coach that's available is a decent destination. And people forget Todd McClellan. McClellan, McClellan is a very good coach. He's also had a, a bunch of shit thrown at him that he couldn't control. However, there are some things where you're like, I. There's some times where I think, if you don't get a new set of eyes on this, it's never going to get better. Well, and also let me back, uh, let me back up a little bit and praise Oilers management for something that I previously criticized them for. They're using Miko Koskinen quite a bit, and I don't think they regret that signing one bit. They're a little cap strap for sure, but. It's looking to be Looks, worthwhile so far. And good for them. That's so good. Far. They need something to go their way. So yeah. I think Edmonton's uh, a team that's about to do something crazy, If it, unless you think the Spooner deal was crazy. I don't mm-hmm. think it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And Not I quite. don't know if this matters or if it helps, but on uh, yesterday's edition of Insider Trading on the Three Letter Network, Darren Dreger said, McClellan is safe for now. They are planning to stay the course. Sure, they are. So there you go. The only way that that Chirelli saves his job is if he hires Quinville. That's my opinion. <laughs> Jeez, that's my opinion. I think yeah, we're talking about do. Todd McClellan, like uh, not having time, or uh, you know, has he had enough time? Uh, Chirelli's had enough time. He has. You know, he goofed big. If he doesn't do this, uh, speaking of coaches, should I read that thing I was telling you about? Oh, uh, well. I, I was going to save that. Save that? Yeah, just because I'm going to get through these teams and then we'll get to that. Let's Is that cool? It. Let's save it. Are you so cool there, with that? There's, we'll call that a tease, folks. That's what we call a tease in the biz. Yeah. The second team that I think is about to do something crazy are the Calgary Flames. If you saw the game last night against Montreal, they had a great game. And Mike Smith, and, and he said this, he owned it, and I respect this. In the, He said, you know, I don't know how that goes in. That's not acceptable. I feel bad. I let down my teammates. That sucks. But if I am the Montreal Canadiens, I am putting in calls to the New Jersey Devils, the New Jersey Devils, and the New Jersey Devils. I am paying whatever I need to pay for Corey Schneider. I'm taking the salary off the books for them uh, because Keith Kincaid is very clearly the number one guy there now. And Corey Schneider's been bad there. I wonder, Corey Schneider probably needs a change of scenery, and Calgary's probably like, we don't care. Just, oh, just your Calgary. Yeah, I called. I thought it. you said Montreal. No, if you're Calgary. And I was like, you, you might as well. Quit. I was talking about Mike Smith and the, and Cal- Mark Bergevin would have to go into witness protection no. if he tried to carry price for no. Corey Schneider. No, you got to. Oh my God, you got to have. Here's oh. the thing. I think what they need to do is take the, take a little bit of the pressure off of Mike Smith here. Grab another guy who you know can start and, and has put together strong seasons. Rich. Well, uh, they don't know yet. But play him uh, more. Play more. Have been split very or something. good. Pretty sure he leaves the league in save percentage. Why do they keep starting? Then why do they keep starting Mike Smith? Because they're trying yeah. to get him to work. Maybe what Mike Smith needs is to step back. And you know they always talk about oh reps, reps. You get you got to get in there and stop the puck. You you know who that? Uh, <laughs> remember when I thought Anti Ranta might be taken over for Henrik Lundqvist? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, you have no choice but to make that contract work. Well, what got him back on track was Ranta started like what was it four or five straight games, and then Lundqvist came back in and did Henrik Lundqvist things. Mm-hmm. Man, part of the reason the Rangers aren't like in the complete toilet is because of him. Well, I would agree then. I would agree with you there that he, it's time for him to take a, a little bit of a step back, but I think the Flames need to go out and get someone like a Corey Schneider where they can go, they can confidently say, because this team, here's the problem, is that this team is too talented. They're too good to not have some sort of great starter. And I wonder if if you have, if you can have Corey Schneider come in and be the guy that either either is the, is the 50 game goalie and then Mike Smith plays 30 or Riddich is the guy I just feel like you gotta you gotta do something. Here's a flaw in that plan. Oh, were you uh, I was just gonna say well, I just, trades. trades. I just don't fun. think Corey Schneider's that guy. You take on six million dollars till twenty twenty two. The term Ooh, that's a the bad terms deal. the big yeah. problem. Remember Ooh. we were talking about that last show. Holy I thought it was shorter too. Yeah. So his contract I think goes longer than I didn't Mike realize Smith's. that. Yeah, and also Woo. Riddich is five and one with a nine thirty five. Well then maybe you ride the Which hot is hand. a yeah. very small sample size. Yeah. You know, the, there's, six, there's six out of nineteen games is it's decent for a season. It's a quarter, twenty five. Yeah. He's played six games and they played nineteen. 
And he's five and one, nine thirty five. Right. No, so but bad. like it's still like it's sick. I mean, just looking at him though, it's sick. Yeah, games, right? yeah, yeah. Um, I would say he could use like a veteran behind him, for sure. Uh, I just don't know if Mike Smith's that dude. I don't know. I think I think the best thing for Calgary to do right now is to make that make that contract work and see what you got with Riddich. Um, give Riddich, I don't know, next three starts, something like that, provided there's no back-to-backs, and then give give Mike Smith a game, see how he does. Here's another team. Give me another team. They're about to do something crazy. About to do something crazy. Florida Panthers. Interesting. 7-6-3, and three, last place. Really? They're already five points out and, and of a Mike Hoffman spot. has a 14 game point streak and they're just still broke, struggling. Just broke Burray's record for point streak for the, for oh, the Panthers. Oh my God. They need That's a stop. last place in the division. Right? In the division, yeah. Because yeah. Pittsburgh's stop. last in the East. Oh Pittsburgh's last in the East? Yeah, yeah. Dude, look Good at. Lord. Go look at uh, the <laughs> NHL standings. They're bizarre yeah, world yeah, right. Yeah. The fact the, that the, the Islanders are in second right now. The Blues are like a bottom Crazy. five team. Yeah. Well, and the, this is the thing: the the Panthers aren't even that. the The record isn't that bad. It's seven, six, and three. Not something you can't recover from. Right. But two years ago, they fired everyone. It's over Batman five hundred. And then they fired all the people that they that they'd hired, and they brought Dale Talon in again. And they had the worst expansion draft out of anybody in the history of time. They did. Yeah. They did. Well, and apparently Dale Talon would not trade Michael Matheson for uh, William Nylander. William straight Nylander. Up. <laughs> that was great. Oh my god! So and was like, the, well, good. We wouldn't either. <laughs> see, see my tweet. I'm like, maybe it wasn't just the fax machine. <laughs> if that's what he's thinking, I mean, cup. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I have Half to a cup or whatever you call it. I feel like um, with with um, Dale Talon. Dale Talon's another guy that's got to do something because you know you could tell from a lot when, of desperate when GMs. we inter- yeah when we interviewed Doug Sifu, you could tell that that's not that's a guy that's fair, but he's not a guy that waits. And yeah. I don't think Doug Sifu or that ownership group are the type that are going to be like, yeah, we'll wait this out for the long term, five years, Dale. The three strikes sort of thing. You have Barkov, you have Huberto, you've got Ekblad, you've got tons and tons of talent on that team. And you're relying on 40-year-old Roberto Luongo because James Reimer and Michael Hutchinson have been bad. That's such a shame. And so I, I think I think the Panthers desperately need to do something. And while Dale Talon is in charge, while the, the reins are still with you, right? Yeah. Mid-season. You still have a chance, at least as while you hold that job, to hang on to that job by making a move that makes you better. I don't know what that move is, but I think the Flan- the Panthers are open to doing something crazy. I, I so I'll criticize teams that that put themselves in a stupid situation, but I look at the Panthers' goaltending situation and they I'm I'm struggling to find out what they did wrong. Yeah. Luongo was so good last year, but he got hurt. And he's getting older and his workload should go down. So you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sign a one B. Or a 1A, sorry. They went out and they signed James Reimer, mm-hmm. who's, for most of his career, has been a 1A, and they signed him to 1A money. And you know what? Let's get a backup for that plan, and we'll get Michael Hutchison, arguably the best goalie in the minors, not named Garrett Sparks. He, When he was playing, I think he was even better. But then he got called up. <laughs> they whiffed. Three strikes, you're out. Yeah. Just yeah. brutal. Like, I don't know what they could have done differently, really. I, I just think they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to. They'll have to figure something out. Uh, the next team, I think, that will do something crazy, and if, they already if have. It's not, if, if, they're, if the move the Panthers make is not net, it's a mistake. I don't think it's going to be a net. So I, I think it's going to so it'll that's, be a mistake. That's what I get. Again, team's doing something crazy. The last team, I think, is Chicago. And they already have done something crazy, but I think they're willing to do more crazy stuff. And the reason, yeah. the reason is that's not it. <laughs> no. Well, here's the the fun part. So their their new uh, coach, and I got to, I always have to look up his name, like Jeremy Colton. 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 Yeah. Colton. Yeah, yeah. Um, he when he was interviewed after a game this week, they had just lost. What was the Blackhawks record? Sorry. Um, they had just lost, and he said, "We're gonna have to fix it. We're gonna have to fix it quick." And if you look honestly at the Blackhawks roster, seven, eight, and four, there's no quick fix there. No, you have some high end talent, you have some aging talent that's making a lot of money. Uh, you've got, you still have Duncan Keith on that sweetheart deal, um, and getting less and less, get, sweet. getting less and less sweet. And then you've got a bunch of above replacement players. And that's the like you've got a few good young De, pieces. Sure, DeBrincat is a great player. There's no, there's yeah. no question. There, there are some pieces in Chicago. But when he was talking, he was already frustrated and flabbergasted and pissed off. 
I have to tell you, the Chicago Blackhawks aren't good anymore. And and if I'm a jet, it's if crazy. I'm a rival, it's, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't, but they've proven that they're not. And no. Stan Bowman has been on a cold streak. I would say dating back to Hansel for the first. They flipped their first round, first pick to uh, Phoenix for was it Phoenix to Arizona for uh, Hansel. And then they, do you remember that twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen? Yeah. No, Vermet. Vermet. That's Minnesota it. was Hansel. That's right. Yeah. So they flipped their yeah. It was the pick for. But they won. But they won. Mm-hmm. But they won. <laughs> but he was scratched. But they won. They won. And he scored like a game winner, sure. overtime winner. Uh, listen, I'm and not. They won. I'm not begrudging them that. I'm not going to begrudge them their, their. But if I'm a rival GM, Stan Bowman is on a trading cold streak, so I want to take advantage of that. I but call the Chicago Blackhawks. They I did know. win. I know. And you know what? No one can ever take that away from them. No. Nope. And I never would. No. Nope. That's still a general manager that has won three cups. It's, but Amazing. It's, what have you done for me lately? That, that's, well, but that's, that's, that's the sort of sports. thing when it's the summer and you're, you know, sitting on your dock and just going, you know, and you're reminiscing. Well, guess what? It's November and there's no time for that right now. Win me some damn games. Yeah. The, the goal is fans, to win. We got We got ownership. The goal is to win every season. Yep. That's the goal. Yep. So it's great that you won in 2015. Hey, since they're poised to do something absolutely bananas. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I throw in an outside contender to get the Let's last year of Artemi Panarin? Who? Chicago. Oh, they're gonna they're, they're gonna <laughs> sign him this offseason. And put him on a line with Saad. I want to see it. Max Chaos. Let's go. Let's go. I want to see it. Um, That'd be kind of fun. It yeah, would but be what do they give fun. up to get him? There's, they, they, Whatever. They can't possibly do it. They don't have but, the depth. They're like, gonna trade Dubrincat? Like, what are you gonna do? And what are you doing I'm that thinking. for? I'm are you thinking. gonna make the? What are you gonna try to make the playoffs and then get trounced in the first round? Yeah, but Adam, they don't care. Like they don't. They don't care, right? But the point they is to just win. Want success. Yeah, and getting Panarin brings them closer to winning. It sure does. It does. There's no question. It's just. Ooh, I give up a, a first round pick. No, you can't do that. Why not? I guess you sort of have to. I think yeah. they have to. What do you lottery protect it? You try to lottery protect it. <laughs> Oh man, they could be they could do Dory on themselves Nick so quickly. Schmaltz? Okay, anyone Ooh. under twenty four, just throw them in. Like, Nick Schmaltz, who, yeah. Bring to bring do, do it at the expense of to bring cat. I don't think no, so. No, no, you keep to bring cat. Yeah, but if well, you're Columbus, you want to, but why would Columbus not go for him? Exactly. If I'm trading Panarin, I'm getting to bring cat. Andreas Columbus is Martinson. first. Well, we'll, we'll throw on the first. Like that. No, Columbus that'll... is win win now mode. If you want Panarin, you're going to have to give them that something that helps them win now. They're first in their division. They can't. Yeah, they can't justify a trade like that. They they don't got nothing. Unless they unless they're not like by the trade deadline. Okay, they, maybe they maybe. start tanking. But I don't see why they wouldn't be because they still have Vesna Bobrovsky. Man, wait a sec. The Blackhawks have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys on entry level deals. On their roster right now, because the top end makes and too much still money. Because the top end makes too much money, and but like still that's tight. that's a team poised for like a quick little rebuild, quick. Like because they again, they're still paying too much money to a few guys, but if you sell off a couple of those spare pieces, the guys who aren't locked in forever to no move deals, <laughs> uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Well, speaking of Vesna, did you see that uh, Freddie Anderson's projected to win the Vesna right now? Why not? Look at his numbers, man. It's, uh, Save percentage is ridiculous. Yeah. His record's ridiculous. Yeah. He's been ridiculous. <laughs> I, He's it, been a great goalie, the man. The Vesna race reminds me of the Cy Young race. I think pitchers and goalies are so similar in terms of the loneliness and uh, of the position. It's the it's the only race where you can go backwards. Yeah. But yeah. it's funny. Uh, the Jake DeGrom, who won uh, the DeGrom. NL... DeGrom, sorry. Who won the NL race. I thought that was wrong, but I didn't have the confidence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just going to interrupt. Sid Whatever, it's close. Tim and Sid, uh, <laughs> November 22nd. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the thing was, he won the the Cy Young, but there was somebody that dared to vote against him. Now, this guy had a one. Yeah. What did he have? Like a one seven seven ERA. It was ridiculously yeah, low. Yeah. yeah, but he didn't win. But he, he didn't, didn't win. have enough wins. He was ten and nine. Now the Mets are stinking terrible. Wasn't it? Um, so that's why. But he had. He, I think he went twenty games or something without allowing more than three yeah. runs. It was from that show where it's two guys split screen. There's a lot of bells and they yell at each other in the states. Every American sports uh, show. I know. I didn't narrow it down. Pardon the interruption. Much, did I? Is it? Pardon the interruption. That makes sense. Yeah, he was very. Upset. Anyway, I just I find it funny that uh, uh, Freddie Freddie's in that sort of same position too. People are going to look at him and be like, "Well, his his goals against average is a little high. I can't vote for that." 
You know it's going to happen. It's Yeah, it's going to happen. Well, and what's interesting, and Brian Burke railed against this when he was on ice surfing this past Tuesday. I finally mm-hmm. met Brian Burke, by the way. Um, he railed against this. The GMs vote on one award, and it's the Vesna. And he was Why? like, and he was like, that's ridiculous. Like we know the. He's like, we got three former GMs who are goalies, and beyond that, we're all clueless, <laughs> pretty much. And that's who. And they look at the goals against, and they go, oh, it's too high. So yeah, if your goals oh. against is too high, you don't stand a very good Can chance I of winning the Vesna. Bring out a uh, my fun Jake Degrom stat, please do. Yes. So he led the MLB in ERA with a one point seven zero ERA. The Mets went fourteen and eighteen in his starts. Oh my god! So every less game than two he runs started, a game. Yeah, less than two runs a game in every game he started. They went fourteen nineteen. His over his win loss record was ten and nine. Like you said, Adam, they're so it's, bad. It's great Lucas. because pitchers literally can't do anything about it. No. <laughs> well, in the National League, they can do one ninth of a thing about it, Which and they even not really. Be doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Lucas Giolito. Had a 6.13 ERA, which is the worst ERA in the entirety of the MLB last season. So we have the guy who has the best ERA, Jacob DeGrom, and Lucas Giolito, who had the worst ERA. The White Sox went 14 and 18 in his starts. <laughs> so there you go. This, wow. That's the same number of pitcher wins and the same team record for the best and worst pitchers in the MLB. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow, what a stat. The MLB is crazy with their stats, eh? There's just some, some, and they're ruining baseball. That's right. That's right. Now, what was the outside? <laughs> what was the outside team that was going to get crazy? Uh, well, I, I just said the Blackhawks were my outside team to get Panarin. Oh, to get and Panarin. then I quickly looked at um the facts. Yeah, and contradict hard. myself. I thought you had another team. Sorry. Um, no. Let, okay, I now, have that. The, time to tell the story. Team. So tell us about that story. What is this? Well, story? So yeah, I, yeah, I'm I just, for this. I, you were driving at him. We were uh, picking up uh, young Jesse Blake from mm-hmm. the train. From the Oshawa Go Train Center. Yes. So this is from... Is it a center? Go Train Center. Is it a Go Train Center? Go Train, train Station. Hair yeah. care and time. It's not a different language out here. I feel like every time I come out to Oshawa, I feel like I'm taking like a mini vacation. Go Train. It's, just, <laughs> it's a great vacation. Hospital isn't it? Like, and airport. <laughs> Schwally, airplane. Oh, Adam, we don't have an airplane. Actually, we do. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> There's planes, little dinky Trevor Phillips GT, GTA Five planes yeah. flying over the house. Do you have an air- airport out here? It's like a. It's literally well, a farm. Someone's field. Lo- it's, it's a like, lawn. It's a lawn. It's, basically. It's, it's not, <laughs> is it? A, is it on Oshawa Road? No, but there is Boulevard. an Oshawa. Oh. By the way, there's an Oshawa Boulevard we just discovered, I, and I'm like, yeah. Steve, I've been living here five years. <laughs> I never noticed. It and it's also a Boulevard North, so there's a and there's South, south too. Oh, yeah. There is a South. There's like a Glen Avenue in Ajax. I keep thinking about stealing the sign. Haven't done it. Uh, from Omar, mm, announce it on the podcast too. Mm, Somebody yes. goes missing. They won't know mm, where to look. Intent to commit a crime. <laughs> uh, from uh, speaking of intent to commit a crime, so this is from Omar Kanuck. Uh, Brent Sopel was on the Spit and Chicklets podcast yesterday, and what he said about uh, Coach Crawford was wild. Here, sorry, I just realized I opened up the wrong thing. Uh, No, so uh, Mark Crawford, who I guess would have been, I don't know when he would have been Brent Sopel's head coach, but he, yeah, I don't know. Chicago? That's uh, that's what I was trying to figure well, out. I, I can't remember Mark Crawford being the coach there, but maybe he was. I don't Current know. assistant or associate uh, coach in Ottawa. Uh, we interviewed him, actually, when we were filling in for we Jeff did. Blair. That's right. And I thought he was really nice. <clears throat> this is uh, Brent Sopel on Mark Crawford from the Spit and Chicklets podcast. Uh, I think it was my third or fourth training camp. I'm going to take some creative liberties with the language, folks. I think it was my third or fourth uh, training camp. I'm in Ottawa. We'd played an exhibition game. Mark Crawford is our coach at this time. He pulls me in and he says, Soaps, we're sending you down. You're a P word. You don't fight. You don't hit. You don't skate. You don't shoot. You're a P word. You do fucking nothing out here. So we're sending you to the minors. He said, you're terrible. You do nothing. You don't shoot hard. You don't skate hard. You don't pass hard. You do absolutely nothing. You have no hope of an NHL career. So you're heading off to the minors. See you later. No joke. I thought the NHL was no hope after that meeting. Crow and I had a love-hate relationship. We had more fuck you matches on the bench and in the dressing room uh, than I've ever heard. He came after me all the time. And this is Ray Whitney now. Or not Ray Whitney, sorry, Ryan Whitney. Uh, Is it true he would go up and down the bench and kick guys? 
What? And Sopel said, he kicked me, he choked me, he grabbed the back of my jersey and pulled me back, he attacked guys personally, he came on, man, sorry, I'm not laughing because I think it's funny, I'm laughing because I can't believe it. It's absurd. Yeah, he came, he came up one year after the season, he's like, Soaps, you need to work hard, you need to gain 15 to 20 pounds. So I left there, went home, hit the diet, hit the weights, put on 20 pounds of muscle. I came back here and he's yelling... <laughs> He's yelling at the bench, what are you fucking Hercules now? Are you turning mm -hmm. green? Are you the Hulk? Just screaming at me. He suspended me for, I think, six weeks. He wouldn't let me play. Only in practice, he bag skated me. And I have to step on a scale every single day to see what my weight loss was before he'd let me play. For whatever reason, he kept putting me out there. I played, I probably played close to 500 games of my career for him. Uh, so as much as I hated him, for whatever reason, there was something he liked about me. Wow. Once again, that was Brent Sopel on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, and that uh, transcription is from Omar Kanat. That is insane. Ooh, wow. Wow. That is, uh, so you want to play in the NHL, huh? And then uh, some of the comments underneath. By the way, we're only uh, highlighting the good comments, Jesse. Mm. It's, well, he's an NHL coach, and it's his job to get the most out of his players. He, he literally okay. wanted the most out of him. That's why he tried to juice him with his hands. He was trying to get physically right. the most. That's, out of him. yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Prince you, Opal is not a small man, by no. the way. Like, any head coach and in the Mark league. Mark Crawford is, much, I think. Uh, he's not very tall. I mean, he's regular, I think. Like, at most, he's He'd regular. Like us. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that to Prince Opal, man. I don't think that's a good play. Wow. It, well, I'm sorry. That was the rest of the comments. Like, how didn't he just choke him back? I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading a book that's right crazy. now uh, by a British DJ I absolutely love. His name's Chris Evans, and um, he Captain America. No, not that Chris Evans. Sorry. And he so he's talking about growing up in British schools, and I guess British schools up until recently were pretty tough. Wow. And so he had a physics teacher. Did he talk about uh, <laughs> the Sorting Hat? Huh? What? No. Sorry. He said, so I guess he was writing on his desk, and he's like, remember, I was 13, and my brain was underdeveloped, so forgive the forgive what I was writing, but I guess he wrote that this teacher was a... Uh, An asshole, or whatever. Well, it was, it was the Q word. So, oh, fair enough. Anyway, so this is in the late 70s. And this, the guy came came up to him and said, "What are you writing? Or, or, you know, Evans, what are you writing on the desk? Read it out for the class." Oh, no. So he had to read it out for the class. And this, this is an old teacher; he's teaching physics or something. And then, so the guy reads it out. Of course, the guy it's an all boys school, so they're all laughing. And he's like, "Evans, stand up, stand up." And so he stood up, and the guy punched him in the chest. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> he like like with all of his might. You imagine thirteen year old kid man. Yeah, I don't even care if you're 50 or 60. You're strong still. Oh yeah. You punch a kid oh, yeah. in the chest. You're you're some kind of psycho. So, <laughs> and and so what Chris Evans did. And I God bless him for this. He apparently he picked up his chair and smacked it across the guy's back <laughs> in the, in the classroom. Like and he a, said like a wrestler. Like he literally yeah. he apparently <laughs> he, he picked up his chair and just went wham across the guy's back. And and he's like and that he's like that was the moment I realized he's like I'd taken the power back because he looked at me like in fear. He's like, cause I, he's like, at that point, I had won the fight. And, and because it was the late 70s, they were both probably back in class the next day, like nothing happened. He left the school, never went back, but oh, he never, never, got mind. never got suspended. The guy never pressed any charges. He's like, I'm, he's like, I think my mom went to the school to talk to him or talk to the headmaster about it, but she's like, I'm not actually sure. Like, it was one of those, that's the 70s, man. Like, it, <laughs> wild, right? Crazy. It's, imagine, yeah, that's not natural. Imagine punching a child. As a teacher. In the chest. In the chest. That's a weird area to... Feed our Yeah, forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So all I can think about is um, um, my dad had a similar story, but he was a little bit older, and he was... It was something even more ridiculous. It was around the same time, too. He was chewing gum. Oh. In class. Heaven forbid. Can't chew Why gum. was that a thing? I don't know. But he was in, Who like, cares? grade 12 or grade 13. So, like, he's... He's an he adult. Might even be an adult, yeah. Yeah, grade 13 was... You're an adult. And he's chewing gum. And he's like, Glenn, you know, get up, put your gum away. Or, no, no, he's he's like, Glenn, are you chewing gum in, in class? He goes, oh, yeah, sorry. And he goes to take it out, and he gets up to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> he's like... He's like... He's like, no, you gotta put it on your nose. You gotta wear it on your nose, the gum. You, like, wanted him to put the gum on his nose. And so my dad, being an adult, 
threw the gum at him <laughs> and said, put it on Good. your fucking nose yeah. and drop the class. Because <laughs> he's a legend. That's amazing. That's a great... I love that. <laughs> yeah. Put it on your fucking nose. Wow. Yeah, he wasn't a great student. <laughs> <laughs> That's but awesome. But he's my dad and I love him. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> random story, but yeah, just yeah. punched a guy in the chest and threw some gum at him. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's... Uh, Crazy stories. Man, Crazy how stories. how did we get here? Uh, well, Brent's Opal... By the way, some of those Spit and Chicklets interviews have been phenomenal. Oh, yeah. There's been some crazy stuff that they, like, I am blown away constantly that they seem to be the only show, truly, that can get real stories out of current NHLers. Well, okay, first of all, they all played in the NHL, and each one of them has fuck you money. <laughs> so, yeah, like, so I guess it doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah, like, so, you know, if they get in trouble, like, who cares? Well, yeah, and, it's, and and I like I'm blown away. And that's that's a sneaky little thing by Ryan Whitney there. Like, oh yeah, I heard he used to kick guys. Like he probably knew. Oh, he 100. percent Yeah, and, and so he he's great interview. Leading him into it. Oh yes, now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Great interview skills. That's wow. what you want to do. Um, let's wow. do the press conference. The presser. S D P. The Steve Dangle press conference. I'm excited for this one. Oh. Uh oh. We get to play. Trivia. Oh, no. all right, okay. all right. This is from uh, Trivia. Sty Glass One Mo. I don't really know how to pronounce. There's a bunch of ones instead of like I's and L's in there, so I just tried to guess. Anyways, young man, your typing scares me. <laughs> he writes on our Reddit page. There are five or she. There are five active NHLers who played at least one game in the '90s. Can you name them all? Ooh. This is a Stan, Marlo. Stan the Man Narodka stat. Marlo Thornton. Yeah, Marlo Thornton. Uh, Luongo. Luongo for sure. Cullen. Matt Cullen, I was just about to say. And not Ron Hainsey. Although you would think he'd be up there. Uh, active, eh? Come up with your list. Five guys and then give it back to me. I'll tell you how much you got. I know those four are right. Yeah, it's that last one. Who is super old and still playing? It wasn't Ron Hainsey. I want to say he was drafted in like 2000. Or something like that. Because he didn't play right away. Dion Phaneuf's only like five games behind Ron Hainsey, eh? Whoa, really? Yeah, he's, he's I think, one or two games shy of 1,000. Wow. Yeah, but he started playing earlier in his career, right? Um... Man, I'm stumped. Yeah, I don't know. I'm stumped. What's, I don't what know. is your list? Okay. Thornton, Marlowe, uh, uh, Cullen, Luongo. You got them all except ah. for one guy. We're going to hate this too when we go, when we do know it. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm looking you got, around you got the league. You got four or five. I'm looking around the league. Placanitz? Well, he's no. not active anymore. He just retired. I don't know if they've included him. Oh. Um, where I don't know. I'm out. Uh, is someone in Carolina? Justin Williams? No, no, he's not. Five, four, three. Just do it. Just tell us. Two. Just tell us. I, I don't One. know. Zidane Chara. Oh! <laughs> yep. From the famous uh, Gretzky story, he was a rookie with the Islanders. Gretzky is on the Rangers. Gretzky gets on the ice, sees Chara, skates over to his coach, and he goes, "That's why I'm retiring." <laughs> All right. <laughs> Trivia. Good point. Number two. This is from Random Action. Since the 2014 draft, the Leafs have only drafted five players who have played in the NHL. Can you name all five? Does the 2014 draft count? Yes. So five players. Okay, so Nylander, Marner, Matthews. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's bang, 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 one, two, three. Janssen. Uh, no, he was 2013. Oh, he was 13. Yeah. Um, Renat Valiev was a 2014 uh, What draft about Victor pick. Lou? What was he? No, Did he play? No, he was... He played. Uh, he was before that, though. I want to say he was 2012. 2012, yes. Uh, Good job. Nikita? Sashnikov? No, they didn't draft him. Damn. He was a free agent, free agent. signing from Atlant. Um, not Grunstrom. Trying to think of like Wait, how many games? Well, Dermot. Shit, Travis Dermot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah. Give me the five yeah. Guys. yeah, yeah. Give me the five guys. Uh, Marlo Matthews, Nylander, Dermot. Marlo. Marlo. Not Marlo. 
Marner. Marner, Matthews, Nylander, Dermot. Yeah, and Valiev. And Renat well Valiev. Well done. <laughs> How funny that we would forget Dermot, but get Renat Valiev. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, oh, a defenseman, uh, uh, Renat Valiev. Played like 10 <laughs> games. Jeez. Oh, well. Who's he with now? Flames? I think he's with the Flames. He was with the Habs, and then he got traded. You're asking Again. me? Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I would never know that answer. I knew Victor Louvre was drafted in 2012, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know Travis Dermott. The Louvre doctor. Uh, we've had Ron McLean on the show. Yes. Who didn't know is that. your dream guest for the show now? I assume he was oh! there, so that's what we bring him up. Great who's, question. Who's missing from the list? Oh, there's a few. Um, I'm going to say besides Mr. Cheer. Darcy Tucker? Darcy Tucker for sure. Uh, Darcy Tucker would be is a phenomenal guest. Um, Big one. Um, Big one. Steve Thomas. Uh, Steve Thomas. I feel like he a, wouldn't be that great in front of a mic, but he was great to hang out with. Yeah, him, uh, I, well, I think he'd well, he'd do what it, he'd probably protect himself a little bit. Whereas I feel like Tux is like one of those guys that just. Tux. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm Tux. just going to tell you. That's what they call. That's what he called him. Tux. Tux. Um. Uh, Haley Wickenheiser. Yeah, that'd be um, good. She's fresh on my mind from this morning. Apparently, she's eligible for the Hockey Hall of Fame next year. Um, Elliot Freeman brought up in his column that Cassie Campbell Pascal's on the selection committee. He's like, mm-hmm. so how how does she get into the Hall of Fame now? Because she's not in it. Oh, is she not? I didn't know this, but she's not. I don't know how she's not. Oh. What? I know. Okay. The list of people be. not in the NHL Hall of Fame is a little ridiculous. Sorry, Hockey Hall of Fame is a little yeah. ridiculous. Oh, if yeah. You go through it. But like, if yeah. you look Jeff at... Jeff Merrick uh, had a good list he was coming up with. He, mm-hmm. I, I'll, I won't spoil it because he wanted to use it on ice surfing, but there, there are some pretty unforgivable names. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say, Ed? Well, I, 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 look at, I look at who they select each year, and I kind of think like, well, I mean, I know Cassie Campbell Pascal will be in there. But of the names that have come up in the women's hockey section, I don't think you can take any of the names off that they've already put in. Like, like no. there's no, there's none, there, there's none where you've been like, oh no, that shouldn't, that person shouldn't be in. So it's just like almost, I, I feel like they're just going based on age. It's like this person will get there in five years because, yeah. Like I didn't even know, like Jana Hefford's, uh, like young. Like I was, yeah. I was surprised she was eligible. Like when I heard she got named, I'm like, but she was on the well, team. Well, yeah, like, but I didn't know she's on the team for like 20 years. I was like, though. she stopped playing. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Tucker's a great one. Wickenheiser would be really good. Uh, Reimer, yeah, Reimer be good. He would be very good. James Reimer. Um, that's a career done sort of thing. Colby Armstrong. I still really want to get on the show. Mm-hmm. He he's, he doesn't really have much. I'll, of a I'll say I'd love to get Mike Babcock. I'd love to talk oh, to Mike yeah. Babcock. Brendan Shanahan. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Dubas. Kyle Dubas. Dubas in ten years. I don't want him yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want him when he cares less. I would have Mike Babcock on, but I wouldn't even talk to him about the Leafs. Yeah, sorry, cares less about what people think. Yeah. I don't. I want to know what Mike. And I, you know what, Lou Lamorello too. And I don't want to know type of chair. Yeah. Well, tell me about. Tell me about what you're like as a dad. What like what's Lou Lamorello like as a dad? What's Mike Babcock like as a dad? Tell me about tell me about your upbringing. Like like you know in when he talks about leave no doubt and that sort of thing. How much of what Mike Babcock is now and his philosophy on things came from his parents and how much of it was developed on his own? And you know I'd love to know about that sort of thing. I think um, that peeking into someone's minds. Like Elliot Freeman always asks people what they read or what they're reading, and it's always a really good question. I want to get into. What's the psyche that creates what you are? Um, the guy who... So I got to play in the All-Star game at the Easter Seals thing. And the guy who sort of like ran the show... You, you know how you have like a friend who sort of runs your social circle a little bit? Like They're almost like the MC of when you go out. Tom Fergus was was that for, for all those guys. And like I'm not super hip to Tom Fergus's career. He was a little before my time, but uh, he was hilarious. He'd go out there and he'd just do everything in one shift all on his own. And then, like, uh, he'd score a goal, come back to the bench and be like, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> just high-fiving everyone. Amazing. He'd be good. Um, yeah, sorry. I wish I had, like, a more concrete answer for you. Borea Salming would be a dream. Salming would be good. I want to know about the 70s Leafs, and I want to know what it was like to work under Harold Ballard. That's what I really want to know. Um, that's I really want to know that. And I've interviewed Daryl Sittler before. I've interviewed Lanny McDonald before. I think you've done both as well. I've never fully got a clear answer, but 
but everything. Landon McDonald was nice. Uh, oh, when he's I great. Met him. And he's amazing. I think, I think I interviewed him for 20 minutes and 10 seconds worth of the interview saw the light of day. I, I interviewed Grant Fuhrer for 15, 20 minutes for Nike. And I don't think we ever used a single second of that footage. I know. It drives me nuts. I got a picture out of it. Well, that's good. <laughs> we should have that. <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Any others, Jesse? Um, Not grapes. Not grapes? No. That oh. ship that ship so. I don't think so. Interesting. I'm a Is it is it a, a cop out to say I'm just too afraid? No. I mean you can you'd say whatever you want, it's your show. Too I, I would <laughs> grapes fifteen years ago, if I was this old if I was as old as I am now, but I could have grapes fifteen years ago, I take it. Now I'm just like, nah. Nah. I'd love to meet him. Here he's great to he's work a, with. He's a very nice guy. Here he's great to work with. Awesome. Um, but I just, boy, an hour or two is a lot of time to talk to a guy. <laughs> and I, no, thank you. Wow. Uh, no, thank you. I'd I, I think I'd do it. I think for sure I would do it. I would never turn that down. I think it would just be an interesting hour. Um, and I and that's not because of the political stuff. I think it's just like he's. Mine is. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I think it's just more like, tell me more about. You know, I, I would just keep the questions to, you know, talking about the differences in coaching now. Like, I would run that Mark Crawford story by him and go, all right, so what do you think? Mm-hmm. I think if you just stuck to hockey. That's what I would do. It'd be yeah. great. Yeah, I don't think I would ask him about Like, I, I saw the Sean Fitzgerald interview. I think everybody did. And, it, you know, none of it's surprising and whatever. You you think what you want to think. Vote for you want to vote for who cares. But yeah. I just, I look at it like, I, if I'm going to have Don Cherry on, I want to ask him. I want to hear stories about the Bruins in the 70s. Yeah. And actually, I want to hear about... Oh, the, I want to hear about Rochester. I want to hear about the Rockies, man. When he was going on TV going, oh, he still hasn't got me a goalie. Like he went on national television yeah. and said, called out the yeah. owner. Like that's ballsy, man. And in a way, is well, not in a way, directly his goalie. Yes. Called him out. Um, and uh, to a lesser extent, Sean Fitzgerald. I'd love to have Sean Fitzgerald off the show. Sean would be great. He's got great stories. Don't laugh. He's a nice man. Um, why Wilson wanted you guys to know that the Sharks have the worst five on five save percentage in the NHL. Yeah, Jones, um, he made Weird. a couple big saves, but he looked uh, unsure of himself. Maybe they're just uh, having a bit of an off start. They oh. are. They like are. The they're going to be fine. The Sharks are a contender. Well, they're so good. I, I like they're watching. so good. No, they're real good. They're real good. The, once they figure it out, which. I feel like for Good the teams most part do. they have. <laughs> yeah. They're no, they're gonna be A okay. They'll be fine. Uh would you trade Nylander for Max Domi? No. No. Uh, Max Domi wouldn't even do that deal. Max Domi's having a wicked start. Yeah. And you can't take it away from him. Um I'm sorry, but Max Max would say there's no comparison in the game. Like he he Max no. Max is a confident guy. Like I've met Max multiple times. He's a good person, but I have to tell you, like I I don't think any NHLer is is dumb enough to think. Well, I'm, I like they know where they're at. They know how yeah. good they are. They yeah. know what their skill level I is. I don't think he's a uh, Mad Max. Whoa, <laughs> no, he's no so, du- no. <laughs> so he's not gonna like if Mad <laughs> if, if if Max is the GM. I don't think Max does that deal. Like no one. Like, no. Neilander is just he's one of those special f- special players. He's very very good. Twenty one goal scorer William Neilander. I saw someone. <laughs> Um, I know. Fit Phil. I know. Continued along those lines. Doesn't that, exist. Hot dogs. That last question was from Joe Rogan Hair, and this this question is from Fit Phil. Or the usernames are the best. Yeah. Um, could Kyle Dubish negotiate from a trade? Negotiate a trade from a position of strength by threatening to sit Nylander for the rest of the season. I.e., you can have him now for players A, B, or C, or no one gets him. Yeah, you could do that till he's 27. I if mean, you want. I think there's a reason. Yeah, you've heard certain things in the media, and you know, I floated, I floated the idea that someone intentionally texted Frege, mm-hmm. like at a strategic time, so that it was mentioned on Hockey Night in Canada. I'll float the exact same thing that there's a reason why everyone all at once seems to be talking about, oh, the Leafs aren't uh, afraid to sit him for a year, and it's a lot easier to say after you win. Was it two now straight, two or three straight? When you're t- when you're sitting a win out of first place, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you don't need, and, and it's not that you you don't want every, and it's not like a team doesn't need William William Nylander's um, skill. But this is a team without Austin Matthews now too. Yeah, and technically doing, we don't need Austin Matthews to beat the San Jose Sharks. Well, when you once don't in November, yeah, once yeah. in November, when you don't need Austin Matthews, 
and forgive me because I'm overblowing this a little no! bit. There's a little bit of hyperbole here. But if you don't need Austin Matthews and you're or sorry, if you without Austin Matthews are playing like you're going to be not just a playoff team, but a top of the division playoff team in a division with the Lightning and Boston, team's pretty good. And, and I think that's the thing with Dubas. Why why make a trade? And people are like, oh, well, if he sits out the whole year, that's the, the relationship's poison. Why? This is business. Why would the... Unless they have said something acrimonious to each other, unless they've been like... Like, unless it was like the Durant, Draymond Green, you're a bitch, get out of here. Wow. Um, yeah. That, yeah, that, that whole conversation, uh, which I highly, highly doubt. I don't think Lewis Gross or Kyle Dubas talk like that. Um, I I think that there's no reason why he, he may have to. He just may have to because Kyle Dubas cannot lose this negotiation. Cannot lose. Yeah. So William Nylander unfortunately is in a position where does he want more? Does he deserve more? That's up for everybody else to decide. However, he's going up against a general manager that will not budge because he cannot. Yeah, and like it's a it's a very tough situation. If you trade Nylander, it's a big old bunch of maybes. If you lock him in to a nice little number, then it makes it way easier to lock in Marner and Matthews to a nice little number, mm-hmm. and you got a contender for what if, maybe at least even, half a decade. Maybe even at Cap, least Cap, Caparino, Kapanen. Oh, Kapanen. Yeah, he's another guy. Oh, okay. oh, they, they need Andreas Janssen to score five goals tonight, and <laughs> so that they're like, yes, no. People are throwing out insane numbers for Kapanen, by the way. Like what? Like $5 million. You're crazy. Like, no. Connor Brown scored 20 goals as a rookie, and he makes $2 million. Yes. Now, I understand that Kasperi Kapanen is objectively a better player in certain situations. They Brown's, played, Brown's a little thief. Yeah, he is. But, but the, he does, he the does point some is, underrated things that I The point is, if Kasperi Kapanen gets anything over 2.5, I'm going to be real surprised. Uh, Maybe three. No, if he keeps this up, three. Yeah, I could see him getting more, but like... It's been one year, Over though. four is a tough ask. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, D- or depending on the D. I mean, he'll ask. I don't even know if they can. He will that. ask, and he should. But he should, and he's the sort of player that you maybe do a bridge deal on. One hundred percent, right? Yeah. The, you, I mean, you maybe do a bridge deal on anyone you have to, I suppose. But with Nylander, Matthews, Marner, it's just better if you go long term. Mm-hmm. I am. How did we get here, Jesse? Next question. Ah, uh, that was the final question. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. I don't know when oh, we're going to... Yeah. No, oh, the camera's one more thing. Thing. Oh, one more thing? Yeah, the, the camera's on. on. It's just oh. turned the other way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, somebody said we passed our uh, 500th episode. We oh. did. I don't we know. If... We have a couple, like, 30-second episodes in there. Yeah, sort of and, like, best of. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't pay too much attention to that stuff. I just focus on coming in here and having so, a good time with my buds. 500 we're times. at 500 tracks on SoundCloud last episode so we we haven't done 500 episodes no. we're probably like Pretty 10 close. short because like yeah two best of, no four best ofs a year times so three. maybe 20 oh, short so there's well, like then 12 a lot more. so yeah yeah if you don't yeah, count yeah. best ofs as part of that but yeah, yeah. i do plus do yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah it makes it a lot easier yeah, well it's yeah. an episode right an episode's yeah. an episode sure. i uh i i you know what uh the only thing i will say is thank you um, yeah. I know there are people that have been with us since literally the beginning, uh, and if you May haven't, that's fine too. Who cares? Like I, I the fact that you yeah, signed on at all. Jesse, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm one of those people. Where were you, huh? <laughs> didn't even know him. Didn't, <laughs> didn't even know no, him. I didn't. And that was the. No, I didn't either. And I think the no. That, so just say oh, like I guess what I would say is then. thank you for for listening <laughs> yeah, as long as you, you have. Were a child. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the the most podcasts start and then about twenty episodes in they stop. And yep. that's like 99.9% of podcasts. And I just want to say that the fact that we... That's a great threshold. Yeah. If you make the, it past the 20th show threshold, you're okay. Totally. I think uh, I think it's I think it's great. And I'm, I'm really appreciative every every day of how many people are listening and, and for how long you know we've been able to do this. We're very lucky. Hey, remember when we started a hockey podcast in May? <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> and it didn't fail. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, we somehow made it through the summer, too, that year. How did, how did hey, we do uh, that? Hey, let's start, like, two weeks after the Leafs get eliminated <laughs> in May. It was a great idea. There was a lot to talk about, though. That was, like, the height of Leafs anxiety. Yeah. And, and uh, then David Clarkson. Was much signed. has changed. All right, so thank you so much for listening. We'll be back uh, sometime early next week. We have no idea. Yeah, I'm sorry for the inconsistent schedule, guys. That's me. We'll figure it out. But yeah, we'll it's okay. Bookie Wook. It's all good. Yeah. Um, it's his Bookie Wook. Oh, yeah. It's-
It's the book. The thing I'm writing. Yeah. Book you walk. Pre-order it. <laughs> what? What isn't a word? I, yes, are Jesse. We, oh wait, are you guys aware? <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the butt actually on that. Wook isn't a word. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.